Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Tomorrow is opening day. This morning, didn't have a great hunt. Deer didn't move like usual. We just got set up in the middle of this bedding thicket. Um, we've been saving this spot for the rut. It's a nice, I think it's a nice buck. It's a 170. That was money. I think he's down right over there. 10 yards. Woo! Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. Here we go with another episode of Whitetail Legacy Podcast. Appreciate y'all joining us. Damn, um, he's starting and ending an episode. <laughs> My God, this guy's <laughs> on a next level basis. All right, go ahead. I am one of the co-hosts of this, homie. <laughs> also in the studio with us is the big buck killer himself. His beard has his own zip code. Give him a bow, he'll smoke a three and a half year old all day. Well, you got this on your notes or something? <laughs> Give him a shot, he'll take it all the way up to the 200 inch mark. <laughs> Says he has six years of history on a four and a half year old buck with five years of sheds. <laughs> Hunts only seven times a year. Cody Hyphens Jenkins. <laughs> How long did it take you to type that up? <laughs> What's up, man? That you was ready pretty to go? solid. That was pretty solid. I like that. I figured you liked that, man. How you doing? We, can we just put that on every intro? <laughs> <laughs> Cody High Fence Jenkins. I'm just yes. going to introduce myself as that now. Yeah, I'm Cody High Fence Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> Never hunted High Fence, but yeah, yeah, that's my name. Yeah, that's my name. Oh, man, that was solid. That was unexpected. Yeah. I know. I, I just sprung it on you. Yeah, you sprung it on me hard. Didn't even give me no warning. Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like this episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. All right. We had Mark Hur- Hurley on. Uh, this guy... He's out there, man. I love it. He's got some off the wall tactics that we'll share with you guys. He's getting it done on mountain deer, which is crazy to me to even hunt like that, you know. When he says mountain, like I I'm picturing like like Minnesota, you know, when you get up there, but I think they're bigger than that. When he says mountain, I picture a goat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like a goat coming down a mountain oh, that man. I've seen in Montana. Yeah. I mean it, it I can't even picture what he's talking about, but when he says he gets it done. He gets it done. Yeah, he gets it done. And um, it's just, to to me right now, it's just kind of an abstract kind of idea because I haven't done it. Mm-hmm. But it's cool. It's very cool to follow uh, him on social media. Yeah, and, entertaining because he just does so much different stuff. Yeah. And, and he's not afraid like, well, I probably shouldn't do this because someone's going to think that it's, you know, not the thing to do. He's like, well, I'm just going to do it because that's how right. I want to do it. You know? that, that's how I'm going to learn, you know, for future years or, yeah. you know, this is something that I can use every year and get it done. Mm-hmm. For sure. So very cool for him to come on and share some different techniques with us that not a lot of people are doing. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's get into the sponsors. You got a you got a VIP shout out pulled up. I do, man. Uh, you are on it tonight. Oh yeah, I, you are really prepared. Wouldn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go ahead and we'll hit it with the VIP shout out. This week's VIP Bed and Broadhead shout out is Will Nelson. Will is a disabled combat veteran. Uh, we can't thank him enough from everybody here at Whitetail Legacy for the VIP family and Matt and Cindy. Uh, Will commented on our Facebook post, and um, that thing's really been lighting up here the last couple weeks, so definitely keep those coming in. We appreciate everybody commenting on there and everybody tagging everybody. All right, ECW Hunting Calls. Um, He's doing this thing where even if you have your favorite glass turkey call, you can send it to him, and for $10, he'll put a new glass on it. Nice. Yeah, so if you have your favorite turkey call, even if it's not an ECW brand, he and it's cracked or damaged. He will put a new glass uh, top on it for ten bucks. That's a pretty solid deal. That's a really good deal. And then if you talk to him, you can even get it etched with something. You know, mm-hmm. like we got. So if you're gonna, if you got one that's broke and you want to get it etched with, you know, like a turkey feather or a, a, a you know turkey fan or a name or something like that, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, we got our logo on a few, and we're gonna be hitting those pretty 
pretty hard here coming coming soon. Coming real quick. It's about time to get off the deer, find some sheds, and shoot some turkeys. So um, we'll go ahead and finish out the last thing on the scent lock thing. Last thing on the scent lock flyer is maintain. And it says, wash your gear only when muddy or bloody. Uh, I know that's something that I've definitely done this year. I've, I've washed my clothes less and less than I have uh, ever. So definitely uh, a plus to the Oz. Yeah, using the Oz system, using the bags. Yep. Definitely a plus. Real big thing that my wife likes is I don't get cockaburs in the washer or the dryer as much. Because uh, if you miss one of those and she gets them in her panties, she's not very happy camper. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see. Ingram's Outdoor Obsession. Um, this is, this, I'm going to just show out like kind of a tip for this. He was getting some bucks from first shotgun season, second shotgun season, that were people thought it was cold enough outside to be able to keep the cape. Mm-hmm. So that's something that you could think about. Even if you think it's cold outside and you got that thing folded up, that cape's not going to be any good. But mm-hmm. one good thing about Ingram is he has a bunch of excess capes, so he's still able to do that mount. So if you have a mount out there that you don't have a cape for, even if it's a skull plate from a couple years ago, he can mount that buck for you and make it just like you remember it. So also, if you shoot a buck and you're not sure if you're going to take it to the taxidermist, make sure and freeze that thing. Roll it up and freeze it. Um, yeah. Only way to keep that high protected, and uh, and and safe. So when you do go there, you're not you're not out that high. I would say I know when when we've went there and went through the rack pile, and you know we're just you know lambered by this buck. You know he's like, oh that's a that's a euro mount. We're just like what? Or you know yeah, and then he capes them all out. And yeah, then he tells the guy, hey, you know I'll give you a deal if you let me keep the cape. And most people are right up for it. And then he gets the option to be able to mount people's. Like, uh, homeboy got tore up by the coyotes in mm. 10 hours, so uh, that's not his cape, but looks awesome. So yeah. he's able to match the neck up and, and get a good feel of what you want and showcase the deer. So hope you guys enjoy this episode. It's out there. It's a lot of fun. And uh hope you guys learned something. I learned some stuff, some stuff that I might try. I want to go out there and just spend some time with him in the woods and I know. enjoy I'd li- it. I'd like to just get behind him and watch him go through his thought process. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it be bear or deer or, you mm-hmm. know, whatever whatever it is when we get out there. So Yeah, big shout out to Mark for coming on and uh having fun with us. All right, we got Mark Hurley on the line. Mark, what's your uh beverage of choice tonight? I am hitting the bush light but Uh-oh. laying it down. Nice, yeah. We got I got some some of the orange can bush light from the hunting season left over, and then I got some of the blue can bush light. So we're yeah. get we're getting That's her down. A, my store done ran out of the, uh, the uh, hunting season one. I guess I probably cleared them out. <laughs> 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 so, so, so we're hitting the light blue right now. <laughs> nice, nice. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, where you live, and uh, and how you hunt. All right. My name is Mark Curley. Um, I live in the Shandow Valley. It's like the most western point of Virginia in the middle of the state, up against West Virginia. And I'm just a crazy-ass bow hunter. I hit, like, the deepest, tricky, and darkest hollows of the mountains, and I chase mountain goats pretty much, big-ass mountain bucks. Yeah, you get her done, man. That's no doubt. Yeah, crazy off-the-wall tactics. I love it, man. I think out there hunting with you would be – I would be scared and having a blast the whole time. <laughs> I'd be scared. Yeah, I'd be scared. I'd be like, man, we are going way in here. <laughs> but. Was, well, i tell you something that's kind of like, I guess like technology is starting to catch up is um, for years, like, you know, I didn't have service. So when I first, cause, see, I'm, I grew up in Maryland. I grew up in the suburbs, like, you know, pretty much in between D.C. and Baltimore is where I grew up. And I've only lived out here for like, you know, 12 years now so when i moved out here it was like a culture shock you know what i mean and i was used to hunting like you know where i was set it up i was set up and you know i could see people's backyards and you know stuff like that when i was growing up and learning how to hunt and then i come out here and it was just like freaking vast mountains and <laughs> it took a whole lot like yeah i had to teach myself how to hunt out here but 
Like, you know, you didn't have service back there, so you could get lost really easy. Oh, yeah, I can imagine and, that. Yeah. Now, like, um, some of these pieces of property, and even in the National Forest, like, they're selling little parcels of land for these uh, cell phone towers. So now, like, you know, if you hit, if you hit the top of these mountains, like, you'll have, like, the best service in the freaking world. <laughs> So, yeah, it's changed up. So now, like, I can, like, Snapchat and, you know, post videos and shit while I'm wait. I'm, like, you know, four, mount- four miles back in the mountains, and I'm freaking posting videos. It's pretty wild. Yeah, for sure. That's what I probably I'd be like, I want to go see what's over this hill, and I'd be like, where the hell am I at, man? <laughs> How many hills did I go over? Three, four? I can't remember. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it all starts to blend together. This old man told me years ago, he's like, you know, if you get lost back there, just hit a creek and then just start rolling downstream, and eventually you'll, you'll come to civilization sooner or later. <laughs> that, that's a good, yeah, that's a good, a good plan. Tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sooner or later you get to like, you know, you might run into somebody making moonshine or something. Is that what you mean? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that is a very good possibility. That's a very too. good possibility. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'll take that over c- civilization. <laughs> yeah. Might be able to get you a nice smooth drink on the way down yeah. the hill. <laughs> yep. So we were yep. able to have you on uh, the listener episode a while back, and you were talking about chasing the food sources, which I think is so cool. You're not a real big fan of hunting the field edges, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that Bambi thing you posted, man, that was epic. Yeah, like you, I like I like to give a lot of my friends hard times. So like you know they freaking they go out they leave their house at like six o'clock in the morning and they ride just a little ways down the road and they got like a 50 yard walk to their stand from their vehicle you know so i give a hard time about it like i you know hell i got spots like down here in the lower parts of the valley and shit like that where um you know i do i, I got farms and shit i hunt but i just like to ride people's asses because <laughs> a lot of a lot of my friends you know they they ain't gonna go way back in the woods with me so i like to pick on them a lot it's definitely it's a whole nother lifestyle yeah for sure so uh you're chasing the food source you're talking about the acorns right Ah, uh, see that's is acorns are are the king of the mountains. You know what I mean? That's your number one. But just like this year, I'll break it down really fast and just tell you about like what happened this year from the point that when I did that little viewer podcast with y'all until now. Um, when Before that viewer podcast, it's right when my season was getting ready to start. I don't even think the bear season started yet. No, it was so right before was the bear, the yeah. Yeah. I was running around the woods and I was like, you know, scoping out white oak trees because that's your first one to drop out of here. And that's that's your absolute king of the mountain is your white oaks. So I was chasing white oak trees and I was seeing those really spotty. But I had some spots where, you know, it was like, you know, these trees were filled up. So I was kind of, you know, I was under the impression that, um, you know, it was like that everywhere, which in turn, it, you know, it wasn't. I just actually jumped right on like one of um, like the best spot that I found right off the bat with white oaks dropping like the trees being full or whatever so when bear season came in I situated all up on these white oaks because you know that's where they flock to we killed all them bears off of white oak acorns and then that kind of transitioned into the early part of bow season um, my daughter, she killed her, uh, her first deer off of white oaks. I got a doe off white oaks, got a couple other people does off white oaks and a buck. Well, then I started like trying to chase because, you know, they, they tear them up fast. They're here, they're gone, you know, and then they'll move on to red oaks. Well, then the red oak crop was non-existent. It was fucking dead. Like there was hardly any white oaks at all to find. So a lot of a lot of people were bitching about it, and they're you know I mean pretty much giving up because the deer you know there wasn't nothing for them to eat. So I I mean you know, me I'm a hardhead, so I'm like this guy because I see white oak or I'm sorry red oaks like down in lower lands like when you go by a park or something the parking lot before red oak acorns. 
I'm like, there's, there's rhinos there. I just got to find them. So I spent a shit ton of time in the woods just hiking mountains, hiking mountains, hiking mountains. And I had my bow on my on my back, and, you know, if I see something I snuck up on them, I'd still, you know, still hunt it and try to get a shot on them. But I was just really focused on trying to find these acorns. And I finally found them. And it was like just a – it was on the western side of these ridges. I don't want to give out too many decor, uh, details because – Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a, like I'm still finding some of these spots and – like I'm telling you, man, it is it's crazy how many deer are concentrated in these areas right now because that's like basically their only food form in the mountains right now. It's it's like it's ridiculous. All like them deer that I help people get on this year, like them bucks and all, and like you know, it's a crazy year. I think altogether with my deer, it was like 14 bucks that I put good friends on this year. And yeah. all of them spots, there there were spots that like I've never hunted before, ever, never hunted before, and it's all because I stumbled upon these uh, this little section of red oak acorns that the trees were full, and it had to do with elevation. It was a certain elevation, and if you got like you know three hundred feet below this spot of the mountains or three hundred feet above it, it was empty. There was nothing. And it was on the western side of these ridges, the only side that, you know, wasn't on the east side, wasn't on the south or north side of these ridges. It was only on the western side of these ridges where these acorns were. It was pretty amazing. So I found them. I found and then, you know, I did, I wanted to make sure it wasn't isolated just in that one spot of the mountain. So I went over to another mountain, checked it, boom, same fucking thing. I was like, well, I just found a golden fucking ticket, man. So I started looking for like bedding areas, um, you know, pulling up top of the mess, trying to find like little benches and, uh, you know, points and everything that kind of connected up to where this elevation was. So I found them and I was like, okay, boom, boom, boom. And I just set my buddies up. They didn't even know they were hunting acorns. Like they didn't know at all that there was red oaks, you know, the deer were headed to red oaks from bedding areas. Um, I set them up and be like, all right, you're hunting the bedding area. That's all I tell them. And what it was, those were, you know, going back and forth between these red oaks and the bedding area. And, of course, the bucks are right on them, too. So, so that's, it. that's how that played out. How do you go about identifying these trees? Do you, Is this something that you um, have went through in school or just looked up on Google? Or how do you know a red oak tree is a red oak tree versus a white oak tree? Um, the leaves. The leaves and the bark, um, coloration of the bark, like, you know, white oak trees are really, you know, they're kind of, they're really like silvery white oak, you know, white bark. And um, the the leaf, you know how the leaves have points? Mm-hmm. Well, then on the white oak, they're really rounded, really like rounded off, kind of like a clover leaf, you know? And then the red oaks are, you know, more kind of jagged. Okay. And then you go into your pin oaks and stuff like that, and it's the same thing. So that's what I try to do. Like, when I'm walking through the woods, and I can just tell by the bark of the tree. And then if I'm walking, I'm just looking at the ground, I can see, like, a bunch of certain leaves up to a tree. And I'm like, oh, shit, there's a white oak right here. And then I go looking around for it. Yeah, and when I was... I tell you, another, another thing I do that um, is I got spots that... You know, white oak flats that are really close to well-known areas that, like, a you know, a decent buck likes a bed. What I'll do, I'll go out and, you know, the end of spring into summer. I'll, first, I'll do it, like, right as, um, like, turkey season is getting ready to start. As soon as the trees start budding a little bit, I'll go get uh, tree spikes, like fertilizer spikes. You can go get at a damn uh, landscaping place, you know what I mean? And they kind of look like a nail. But it's fertilizer, and it's hard. I'll go out there, and I'll put, put it's like a 10-10-10 fertilizer. I'll put three of them around, you know, big white oak trees that I know are going to produce. So I'll put these tree fertilizer spikes around, you know, five of them on a side of a hill that I know is good wind to a bedding area that usually holds a decent buck. And then I'll go back in when it comes around to, like, July or something, and I'll do it again, 
and it seems to make the the trees hold the acorns just a little bit longer and and for some reason it makes them like more attractive to the deer too because deer will like jump you know like a tree will be dumping acorns and for some reason they don't want nothing to do with that tree they'll go to the next tree and i think it's something to do with the nutrition value of the acorn i'm not exactly sure about it but they'll skip trees and go to the other ones but the trees i put fertilizer spikes on they seem to always hammer them huh. that's pretty bad yeah that's that's cool yeah yeah um, <clears throat> you know so, oh, go so, ahead. I was just wondering, then, um, how, how long do you think before, um, you know, the the deer group wipes out what a tree's dropped and then they move on? Yeah. Yeah, that's what they just keep on moving. They'll bounce in between the trees so much. But, like, um, all right, for right now, like, I'm still finding deer hanging around certain spots that these red oaks are. But here we go back into what I'm doing like in summertime preparing for like right now. Um, I go and I hunt down clear cuts. Like the Virginia is really shitty on um like the national forest and habitat and stuff like that. A lot of these places are, you know, they're super mature. So there's no undergrowth. You know, the canopies are so full in the summertime there's there's no light getting down to the floor to grow any new brush or anything like that. So it's right. wide open woods. Well um Every now and again, like, you'll find where they do clear cuts way back in there. So I try to focus on clear cuts. You know, I go on Onyx, and Onyx has, a, you know, a filter on it where it will show you, like, burns and clear cuts. So I'll go and scout them out. I try to find ones that, you know, have a lot of buck sign from the previous rut or whatever. So um, I check them out, and I find, like, blackberry bushes, um, honeysuckle. I'm telling you what, like, I don't know how much y'all got of honeysuckle up there, but down here, like, if I find honeysuckle vines and stuff like that, I'll go and I'll get, like, granule fertilizer that I can wrap up in, like, a, a food line Walmart bag or whatever and uh, keep it in my pack, and I'll go in the summertime. It's like, you know, I'm doing minerals and stuff like that. I'll throw this fertilizer to these honey, honeysuckle patches. And just blows them up, you know. Well, then right now, the deer are just hunting for anything that is green, you know, anything that's got any kind of nutritional value. And they'll focus on these honeysuckles, and they'll just burn them up. It's like a salad bar, basically, for these deer right now. Dang, man. You got anybody that's following you back in there and <laughs> seeing what you got going no, not on? Right now. Not right now. Like, I'm telling you, it's, it's, right now, it's kind of scary because it's, there's nobody really messing around the woods. Like, bear hunters are starting to trickle out, you know. So it's pretty much, I got it all to myself, which a lot of people don't get back as far as I do anyways. Yeah, for but, sure. Um, like, just like I was telling y'all, um, you know, chatting back and forth for y'all today, like, that's where I was at today. And I think it all together seemed like six bucks. I almost had um, one of these shooters that I've been trying to capitalize on. And uh, I almost had him in, but, dude, that's all they were doing. They were just nailing these honeysuckle vines. Now, see, that's... Just trying to get what they can. We, we've heard that from a couple other people. You know, right now, the deer are just hammering the the lower brows. Yeah. Do y'all, do y'all have wild grapes out there where you are? I think so. No. Not that I, I know. I some growing in my backyard. But yeah. That's, that's about as wild as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's... A big thing, like, out here, too, is uh, wild grapes. And I know that, like, when I hunted, like, up in more northern parts, like northern states and everything, you can find wild grapes also. And they're hammering them also right now. So so I always I try keying on them also. Where you're hunting, I know you don't like to hunt field edges, but there's really not very much field edge, right? No, not so that's, at all. That's the kind of difference from us. So, like, you, some of the food sources that you're saying, we know they're there, but it's like the deer in your area are keying in on those when our deer are just going to the food, you know, I mean, going to the field edges. So, yeah. So, that's pretty cool to hear a different, you know, side of like where a guy's hunting the honeysuckle and stuff, which, like, the homie was saying, this time of the year, especially when we had that first snow, I mean, any, any of that low browse was just. just demolished Smoke. you know smoke because they can't get through 10 inches of snow in the field to get stuff so they're getting that stuff that's out of the 
out of the snow. I don't think it was that they couldn't. It's just that they didn't want to. Yeah. Yep. See, that's like, um, all right, I'll get into another little aspect. Now, like, we're moving along now. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm making good time. <laughs> yeah, bring it, man. Bring it. So, um, all right. Did you see, I, I made a post maybe three weeks ago about I was trying to go in on this book. I caught, I seen him in a field and I pulled up on the map and I tried to find out where he was betting. I figured out a spot that looked kind of like, I was like, all right, this looks possible. And I ran in there and you know, this is where I seen him at was private land. God does not let anybody hunt. I tried to get him to let me hunt. He's like, I don't fucking let anybody hunt. And I'm like, oh, right, buddy. I like <laughs> stuff like that. Like if I get turned down and it's land that, you know, fields, agriculture fields that push up against the national forest, like the mountain where I hunt, man, I love it. Like I'll, I'm more happy over this man telling me no than really like if he told me yes, because I'd, I'd go in and I'd, it'd be harder to hunt that deer, you know, so to say, because I'd be trying to cut them off but I'd be looping around, spreading my scent up into where they're feeding all night long. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what I do, I ride around, I try to find these ag fields. And if I see that there's a lot of deer hanging out in them in the evening, stuff like that, if I know there's a pile of does, like right before dark out in these fields, okay, there's a pile of does there. There's going to be a mature buck back there somewhere. And the reason why he's going to be there is because there's so many deer there that he knows if he slips down that mountain and he smells all these damn deer that are already funneled down all these trails, he gets down to that field at 9 o'clock at night and these fields are filled up with deer, it's safe. He's good to go, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I do is I'll backtrack. I'll try to find where I think he is betting at. That buck... I think, I don't know, from the pictures of him, I say he's like probably 160-ish, high 160s probably. And that is like, that's a not even really heard of deer around here. Uh, you know, people are shooting deer around here that are like 120s, and that's a deer of a lifetime. A 60-year-old man shoots a 120 out here, and he ain't never shot a deer that big for in his life, you know? So these deer that I'm trying to key on are like non-existent. You talk, you know, people hear about me shooting big deer around here or hunting big deer around here. So I got, you know, way he's shooting deer like that around here. And it's because it's, these deer are really freaking smart and they have so much land to hide that they don't have to do anything. You know, they don't walk by anybody in the daylight. So what I'll do, I'll find where they're feeding at at nighttime and these deer are not leaving their beds. You know, till, you know, half an hour before dark, hour before dark, but they're still like a freaking mile and a half away from their food source. So they're trailing down this mountain and they're finding like these little, you know, ridges and fingers and stuff like that. And they're looping down this mountain and then they hit the field and it's late already, late at night. And then they'll sit out there and they'll eat all the way up to like two, two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. Then they'll start you know, making their way back up that mountain, and then they'll be getting to their bed at like six, six o'clock in the morning, and they'll just lay there all day. They'll stand up, they'll loop around, they'll eat a couple, you know, branches or, you know, whatever they're going to do, and they'll just lay in these like little cubbies all damn day. So definitely, like, there's a lot that goes on with, um, you know, agriculture too that kind of plays into it. It's just like these spots that I'm finding that are farther back in the woods when it comes to like honeysuckles and stuff like that. That's when they're starting to transition and start heading down to, to these ag fields. But, you know, they stop and they'll browse on these, you know, honeysuckles and stuff like that. Like, you know, half an hour before it gets dark. Like, you know, maybe 200 yards away from their beds. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But you're Yeah. You're hunting them way back in there where most people think they're non-existent, but it's because they never see them on the field edge because they don't get there till dark. And that's a lot of what we got going. Unless there's a really like good cold front or it's the rut or something, I don't hunt a lot of field edges. So I just mm -hmm. I've never had good success on them. I've never seen a lot of maturity. Or I know a lot of giants have been shot out of field edges though, but 
Yeah. It's just not for me. So, so we already talked about a little bit, you know, you go way back, you hunt different food sources than most people, but I want to get into like the, are the, you going to hit him with it? Yeah. I want to get into the real good <laughs> tactics that you use, the kind of the off the wall tactics that, that you use. All right, so y'all want to talk about me sleeping in the Yes! <laughs> yes! Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so here we it's, it kind of plays back into where these deer are going down. They're spending the night in these fields. So if if I go out and I try to loop around, you know, if I, if I leave early, early in the morning, and I'll try to loop around and get into these spots where these deer are, most likely these bigger ones that I'm after, they're already up there. You know what I mean? Like, I'd have to leave the house at freaking midnight in order to beat these deer to their bedding areas, you know, most of the time. So, you know, it'd be a little bit after, because I had to walk a long damn ways. And when you're hiking up one mountain, going down the other, then hiking up another one, then dropping down the face of the other to get to these bedding areas, you know, that takes freaking two, three hours just of walking, you know? So I'm like, fuck it. I got to figure out something where I can get to these deer, where I'm not exerting myself, like basically running through the woods to get (laughs) over there before these deer get to their beds, and then I'm sweating and everything else. So... The first couple of times I went in, I brought, like, a tarp and stuff like that and tried to, like, you know, make, like, a little campsite. And I'm like, man, this is just too much. After, like, doing all that and then actually killing the deer and then having to try to pack everything out, I'm like, I'm just going in. And I'm going to say, fuck it. So I go in. He you knows, like, them survival silver-looking blanket things that they have. Yeah, the right. aeros- uh, aerospace blanket yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. So I'll bring one of them, all right? I'll slip in there. I'll get to the spot, you know, say it gets dark at 5 or whatever, 4 or 5. Well, then I'll get in there about 6.37. So the deer, the buck that I'm trying to kill, he's already out of there. He's already making his way down the mountain doing his thing. So I'll get in there. There's a bunch of big ass bull pines and shit like that all through the woods. So I'll climb up a bull pine, cut down a couple limbs, take all the foliage off the you know, the needles and stuff off the limbs. And I'll I'll find a good log that, you know, shoulder width apart. And you know, that's like two of them laying side by side on a hillside. I'll clean out the debris. I'll lay a bunch of pine needles down in there. I'll get a bunch of moss, lay a bunch of moss in there, lay that space blanket in there. And I'll curl up. I'll, I'll hang my stand, you know, before I do all that. So my stand is already ready to roll. And then I'll go and I'll just bed down in between this log and wait for 3 o'clock in the morning, jump up, run over, climb up my stand, and sit there and just and listen to deer make their way up the mountain and filter underneath on me, wait for this, you know, daylight so I can see if I can shoot something. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> so so how do you wake up? I mean you got like you got like Jerry Springer on your ringtone to wake up or what? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, my I, my buddies are like, dude, you're like the American crocodile dundee. Like, nobody likes you, bro. Isn't there bear yeah, there's know, bears there's, out there, isn't there, bro? <laughs> Yeah, man. Like, no. shit, I've had bears walk up on me a couple of times. Dude, dude like, I'm out. Around me and shit. <laughs> I'm like, bro. No. Don't even fuck with me today. I- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm out, man. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Call me a cab. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's bears. <laughs> For sure. It's like, I'm not, like, I've had some, I've had some crazy encounters with bears, but most of the time, like, as long as they don't have a cub, you know, like, they'll sniff around you, and they, they, you know, they get a little curious, but then, like, they're like, fuck that, you know? So yeah. they'll back off, and they'll go. Bro, they can smell um, you, like, a mile away. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, this summer, I got a good buddy. I ain't gonna call him out, because I pick on him enough as it is. I call him Boo Boo now, all right? <laughs> <laughs> like, Yogi and Boo Boo, yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, he was helping me. I was scouting for this early bear season. And we had so much rain, like, these little mountain streams and brooks and stuff, like, they were running with water. So I used that as a cover. Like, I'll drop down these little 
you know, stream bottoms, and I'll run down the stream bottom because it's making so much noise that these deer and bears or whatever, they're up on these acorn flats, they can't hear you. You're shooting right down the middle of them, you know? So here we are. We're rolling down. You know, I'm just e-bopping on down. We're going to get set some trail cameras. And he's right behind me. Well, I come around this bend, and I see something move, like, you know, kind of to the side behind me. Like, I've already walked past it. I'm like, whoa, and I stop and I look, and there's this little bear cub. I mean, a little fucking bear cub. And he's sitting in this creek, and he's only, like, maybe 15 feet away from me, and he's rolling these little rocks around, like, playing in the creek. And I'm like, fuck, man. So I look back at my buddy, and I'm, like, giving him a hand to him, like, hey, man, stop. Hold fucking still. So I'm looking around, because I know the sow, and she's close. So I'm trying to figure out where she is. So I'm leaning against this tree, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking. Well, then there's a bunch of dead, like, trees laying down, like, dead falls and stuff. Well, then finally I see her, and she's only, like, maybe 35 yards away from us. And I'm like, fuck, there she is. So I'm looking at this bear cub, looking at her, and I'm trying to figure out, like, a way to back up to where, you know, I can get away from her. Well, my buddy, he sees her, and he's scared to death of bears. This man, like, he is, he's got a bear phobia. I don't even know why he goes to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so he sees her, and he's like, oh, fuck, man. Well, he says that, and this bear cub freaks out and, like, makes, like, this little crying sound and runs up the tree. I'm like, oh, fuck, man. So I look over at her, and she just stands up on her back legs, like, you know, looking around, trying to figure out, because she heard that her cub, you know? So she stands up, and she's looking around, and this bear's, like, fucking 430, four, you know, maybe almost 450 pounds. Big, big, big bear. <laughs> and I'm looking up, and I'm like, hell, I'm six, two. And I'm looking up at her, like, fuck. So I'm like, hey, Hold still. He's like, man, we need to run. I'm like, hold fucking still. Do not run, dude. Do not run. Well, he turns and he's like trying to start like walking away. Like, I don't know. He was like falling around and stuff. So he was trying to run uh, probably. But I'm staring at her and I could hear him fumbling around. Well, she false charges us. She runs up to like maybe 17 yards from me. And like, you know, like bucking and stuff. And I'm just standing my ground. I was like, like, I didn't have nothing but my buck knife. So I grabbed my buck knife. I'm like, if this way we're going to go, you're going to know I'm here, bitch. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put it to your ass a couple of times. So I'm standing there, and, you know, I'm standing my ground. I'm like, do not fucking run. I'm yelling at him and looking at her. And she stands up again, and she just got, like, drool rolling out of her mouth. Like, you know, she wanted our ass. <laughs> oh, so man. I'm like, oh. I'm like, this is it. So I just started yelling at her, and I ran out. Dude, I look like freaking damn. What the hell is his name? Uh, oh man, No Gibson in that damn movie where he was like fighting the freaking Braveheart. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was, dude, that was me, bro. I screamed and I ran at this bitch with my knife in my hand. I'm like, I gotta let her know, like you know, here I am, and I'm gonna fuck you up. So I screamed and yelled at her and took off running, like, straight at her. She's, like, 16, 17 yards from me. She looked at me and turned and, like, hit the ground and hauled ass, dude. Ran all the way up on this ridge, and she stood up there, and she was, like, watching us. And the bear cubs up in the tree, you know, beside us. I'm, like, I, look, I'm just backing up. I'm keeping my eye on her, and I'm backing up, backing up, and backing up. Well, I get over to my buddy. And he's just laying on the ground. He's puking everywhere. He done pissed himself. <laughs> he done had a hell of a time. Right? He's like, we are, we're going to die, man. I'm like, dude, if you kept on running, we would have died. <laughs> I'm just happy you fell on the ground and started puking everywhere. Like, you know, we just need a backup real slow. <laughs> so I was still ready to go. I'm like, we need to go check this trail camera. So he's like, fuck you, dude. You need to take me back to my truck. So I took him back to the truck. And hiked all the way back, right back through there. And it's like after dark to check these trail cameras. I'm like, this dude done left me. I'm about to get killed by a bear. <laughs> Got to get them trail that cams, was, though. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I had people that ready to kill bears, man. So I had to go in there and check them. Dang. But that was, that was at like the very beginning of October, maybe the last week of September. It was pretty intense, dude. Well, I'll classify you as uh, nuts. 
going, <laughs> charging at a bear with a knife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's all I had, you know. Got to do what I got to do. That's yeah. a, I'm telling you, like, he, he's like, he tells me all the time. He's like, Mark, he's like, I was laying on the ground and I was looking at you and you pulled that knife out and I was like, motherfucker, that's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, you raining at this big-ass bear. I was like, dude, like, I was thinking, well, you know, there's a good chance she's going to, you know, fuck my world up. <laughs> but if I don't do nothing, she's really going to fuck my world up. So, <laughs> you know, I, I know, you know, they're really, they just put on the front until it comes to the Cubs like that. Yeah. And they still, I mean, if you show, if they feel like any way that you are more dominant than them, like, then they're like, you know, they know, like, I need to fuck I don't want to mess with this, yeah. Yeah, if you, sure. you're just like him, like, falling around and stuff and crying. And <laughs> that deer would uh, bear would have ate him. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. we talked about your off-the-wall tactics. You're out there sleeping in the timber to get on these bucks. <laughs> and you're super successful with yourself yeah. and with other people, too. I mean, mm-hmm. you get a lot of other people on deer. Um, go. Let's go ahead and talk about Mike Tyson, the buck you shot this year, and uh, tell us a story, and then tell us why you think you're successful on him. Okay, um, Mike Tyson is the bulliest of bully bucks. This isn't a public land deer. This is a private property deer. And um, I first had my encounter with him. He was a two year old. I killed him. He was like four and a half or something like that. So this deer. Um, I hit this spot when I first seen them, um, I was hitting these rattling horns together. You know, the only time this deer was ever really like on this property was the second to last week of October into the rut. And then he would disappear for a little while. And then he'd come back in like, you know, right now into, you know, shed season. And I, I've actually, had, I got two years of sheds from him. I got, when he was a two-year-old, when he was a three-year-old, I got a matching set from last year, and then I killed him this year. So I was right on horns, and I seen something coming. I seen the deer coming through the brush, and then I got a glimpse of him. I could see he was bristled. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. So I grabbed my bow, and then this little squirrely two-year-old came popping out. <laughs> <laughs> and he just had, like, you know, he just, you no know, brow, just had, like, you know, like a... Like, freaking G2, basically, no brow, and then his main beam, and then, you know, like a three on the other side. And he came in, and he was just bristled up, and he's, you know, walking around, and he's doing his thing, and he's making scrapes, and he's rubbing on trees. I'm like, check this little guy. I saw, you know, just watched him for a while. He left. Within, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes later, I'm like, I'm going to hit the one again and see what happens. This dude was, like, acting pretty badass. Hit the one again. He came right back in again. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't keep on doing this. <laughs> so I'm like, this dude is cool, man. I'm going to name him Mike Tyson because he is a scrapper. So I gave him the name that. Well, then I found the size that was just the two-point side that that shed season. And, um, you know, played into last year. I only got to hunt that spot a couple of times because the wind wasn't really ever right or – um when I'd be slipping in there, I could already see deer filtering through, and I just backed out because that spot is a big buck spot. It's just a bedding area, basically, all it is. There's a bunch of cedar trees, um, Osage orange trees, and there's some locust trees up through there. So it's just thick, nasty shit. I love that kind of shit. And it's just bordered all around by um, cow pasture. That's got a bunch of little cedar islands all through it, you know, I mean, the guy, the, the farmer's really old, so he kind of lets shit go, so there's a lot of brush growing up through it. So, um, I noticed last year I had some good bucks early on before this year would always come to this property this second to last week of October, and, um, you know, I'd be getting pictures of deer, and I'm like, you know, this is a solid, you know, 135-inch buck or whatever, you know, 10 or something. I'm like, you know, if he's going to slip it through, I'll probably shoot him. Well, then I go in the hunt, and I see deer, bucks moving through, and um, they were always, like, real timid, you know what I mean? Like, they were always looking around and, like, watching, you know what I mean? Like, real skittish. 
And I was trying to figure out, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And I was kind of worried, like, someone might have been slipping in my spot, because this is, I'm the only one that's allowed to hunt it. Well, then, come to find out, it's because of this damn deer. He's so freaking aggressive. Like, I'd see deer running through the woods, and I'd, I'd be like, oh, fuck, well, here we go. Here comes, you know, a buck chasing a doe. <laughs> well, this buck would come running by, and then he would be on that buck's ass. You know, that, that was the most chasing I've seen. Was <laughs> on the buck. B- buck on buck? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man, he was freaking on it. So, oh my goodness, do that, man! I was like, you can't keep on doing this because he started chasing like my bigger deer out, you know, because he he wasn't really big at all. I think last year when I got his match and said he was like one ten or something like that, you know, what I mean, just a scrappy seven pointer, just like he was this year. But he grew, like I think my buddy measured him and said that. All together, he's getting into measuring and stuff. He said he was like 130, but I, I think he, I think he's like 125 or something like that. You know what I mean? Like he's he's doesn't really have a whole lot, but he's nasty and mm-hmm. he had a huge body. He dressed out at 196. Nice. And yeah, that's a big deer with you know oh, yeah. dust in them. So, so um, it played into this year. I hunted that spot. I seen him one time, and last year when it the couple of times that I did get to hunt that place, I think he started catching on to me. And I noticed him one time in late season, he went up and bedded on this knoll out into that cedar pasture where he could see where I parked. You know, he could see my truck. And I walked in a couple of times during the rut when I hunted that place, and I noticed a deer that, you know, it was a big body deer that was bounced out of there from that spot. And I'm like, what the fuck? How the hell did that deer even see me? And I think it was him, and he started catching on to me, and he was betting up there, and I was watching me pull in and get out my truck, hop the fence, and you could tell it wasn't the farmer feeding the cows, you know what I mean? Boop, and he'd be gone. Yep. So this this year, I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm going to find this fucker, I'm going to get him. So we had that ice storm, and I noticed a lot of times um, deer, like, you know, bucks in general will push these does out into like these little islands all out in this field, and that's where they'll lock down at. So you know they can see if another buck's trying to creep in on them or whatever. You know. So um, I start flipping around. I was just glassing these little spots, and then I seen a doe. I like I could see like she was flipping her ear around or something. I'm like, oh shit, there's a doe. So I was sitting there for a minute. And I'm looking at her through the rangefinder. And then um, he lifted his head up, and I could see his G2. And his G2 was like freaking 12, you know, a foot long. I'm like, well, that's that's definitely a deer to go look at. <laughs> so I started sneaking down, getting a little bit closer, and they were like 150 yards in. So I got in to where about like 80 yards. And um, then I could see, you know, it was him. I'm like, well, here we go. And you want to shoot him this year or not? And I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to shoot him because I had a, like a 140 inch deer that was hanging in that area and he pushed him out of there. So I'm like, your time's up, but you don't push way too many bigger deer out of here. So I started crawling to get in closer because I had to go through an open part of the field. So it's muddy and freaking icy and it's miserable. And I just strapped my bow to my back with two arrows and just belly crawled like freaking four scump across that field, man. And got in close up on them. And there's kind of like a point of cedars that come out that kind of go to the island where they were bedded at. I got up to it. And I was laying on my belly still. I kind of rolled to my side and I could range them. I ranged them. He was like 28 yards. So it took me a while, like the doe, she was steady looking around, you know, had her ears going, he was looking around, so they were, you know, very, you know, they were checking the scene out. So it took me a while to get to my knees, and shit, probably all together, it took me half an hour to get to my knees, just Damn. watching them and, you know, figuring out, you know, when they turned their head and looked the other way, I'd move, and then as soon as I seen their ears cocking, I would stop, you know, and, and finally it came around to where I could get up on my knees and get ready. So then I just had to wait it out. And I knew that, you know, the deer ain't going to piss when he's laying down, so I had to wait for him to stand up and take a piss or shit or whatever he was going to do. <laughs> so I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited, and it's steady, freezing rain, everything else. 
I ended up having, I took my, unzipped my jacket and put my bowstring and my cams inside of my jacket because I was afraid it was going to get like too iced up or something, you know? Yeah. Fuck up. So I had it inside of my jacket the whole time. I just had my jacket open. So I'm told my bear there waiting, waiting, waiting. And then finally, he's, he's, I could tell he was getting up. He was like getting up on his knees, getting ready to stand up. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. So I got my bow ready. He stood up. He went over, smelled on that doe, pushed her. She stood up. He took like five steps to the side of her and started pitching. It was like rubbing his hocks together, you know? And he turned broadside, or it's like quarter and broadside, and I drew back and I and I put it on him. Well, when I hit him, I hit him just a little bit low and um, pad back. But the way it hit, I was like, oh, I just double lunged him low. Like, you know, that's a dumb deal. You mm-hmm. know, they bleed out fast when you hit him low, double lunged, you know? Right. He's done. So that doe took off running. He was right on her ass, ran into the woods. Um, you know, I could see him a good ways, and they ran off to the woods. But then she stopped. He slowed down, and I could tell, like, he was having a hard time, but he was steady bumping this doe. So I stood there, and I watched him for a minute, and then finally I got out of my sight. Well, I went over, got my arrow covered in blood. Freaking blood spilled everywhere. And I thought for sure he was down. And um, walked all the way through the woods, and there was a blood trail, you know, good blood trail. Then it came, like, almost to the end of the patch of woods that I could hunt. And I'm like, man, this guy's got to be around here somewhere. I know he didn't make it this far. But he was laying over in the bushes, and I kind of walked up on him and didn't even see him. And he jumped up, and I had to, you know, take him out again. And, um, like, that was pretty, pretty wild situation. What kind of bow are you shooting? Uh, I shoot a PSD Firestorm right now. It's an older bow, man. It's only like 10 years old. Right on. It's badass. Any deer yeah. killed off the ground like that with a bow yeah. is badass. I was going to say, it yeah. just just following you on Facebook, you know, and <clears throat> Instagram and stuff, you know, just, just keeping up with what you got going on, man. I feel like you do a lot of off the ground oddball tactics which is why you know we want to talk to you man i mean you're just doing a bunch of stuff that guys are quote unquote scared to do but you get it done yeah yeah that's how i I, my dad he kind of taught me how to hunt when i was really young and he's a gun hunter he doesn't um go hunt at all but that's how he hunts he hunts on the ground like he like a spot and stalk creeping through the woods you know stump hunting like he grew up in the uh up of michigan so that's you know how he kind of learned how to hunt i reckon so that's kind of you know how i learned how to hunt but then when i got into bow hunting then it was like oh you got a bow hunt from a tree stand (laughs) and so i got into that and i learned how to do that but then you know certain times man like you got to adjust to what the deer are doing so like i i'm not scared at all to get on the ground and do it and if i gotta do it on the ground i'll do it on the ground yeah, that's <laughs> badass. Yeah. Yeah, but like, I, like that's all I do is hunt with a bow. Like, you know, deer season is about to end, and um, I'm going to start hammering geese. Well, I shoot all my geese, ducks. I have ducks decoy in, and I'll shoot them with the bow, and then it just gets me ready for a turkey season. And it falls in a turkey season, I'm out there shooting them with the bow. You know, just I always have a bow in my hand. Dude, I seen you shoot. Well, I didn't see you shoot, but... I seen a picture of a dove you shot with a bow. <laughs> that was sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I shoot doves. Pretty much. Every, see, that's what. Like, I, I've, I've been t- keep on kicking myself in the ass because I, I'm like, I need to get a new bow. And then each time, like, I think about buying a new bow, I'm like, well, shit, man, I've killed so much shit <laughs> with this bow. Like, I, why do I need a new one? You know. Yeah. I think I think this year I'm gonna bite the bullet. And I was gonna get a Parker, and then like uh, all of a sudden they just decided to go out of business. Yep, so. No more. <laughs> that kind of cut that out. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's kind of why I quit putting off. You know, getting a new bow for ten years. I just was comfortable with it. I was confident with it. Any place I'd put that pin, that arrow'd go. And uh, man, just you know, a couple times it didn't didn't get the job done for me i didn't have enough didn't have enough kinetic energy to get it done and i finally upgraded 
Yeah. See, I tell you, I'm uh, like, I don't know if y'all seen my post, or, <laughs> but like I've kind of backed out of like these field stat positions, all this stuff that I was into. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, the most deadliest thing that you can go in the woods with, doesn't matter. You can go in the woods with freaking flannel clothes on. The most deadliest thing after years of me hunting and like I've started like maturing into these bigger deer and everything else, like a lot of this stuff, like the deadliest thing you can walk in the woods with is confidence. Confidence fucking kills big bucks. Yep. I tell the homie that all the time. Yeah. So you gotta gotta be confident in where you're sitting because you're gonna be you're gonna be sitting there. It's gonna be nine o'clock. You're gonna be like, I ain't gonna see no deer. This ain't the spot. Need to be somewhere else. But then a giant rolls through at nine o five. So yeah. Um, when I shot that that little squirrely buck by accident that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was set up in a tree, and I'm standing there, and the sun's coming up, and um. You know, it's a good spot. And I was just like, I'm out of the fucking game. I need to get down. I'm out of the fucking game. I just, I feel it in my gut, you know? I'm like, fuck. And then I was second guessing myself. I'm like, dude, you know you're going to kick your ass. You're going to climb down. You're in like a perfect spot right now, <laughs> pinch point with deer funneling back to the bed. And you're getting down, you know, like, you need to stay here. I'm like, fuck it. I'm getting down. I don't give a damn. So I got down. I ran over to where this other tree was that I used to hunt that um, I can climb up the tree and stand on the limb. It's like this humongous pine tree. It's got big, big branches, and you can stand on the limb and be, you know, it's just as wide as some of these freaking lone wolf platforms. <laughs> so I climbed up in that tree, snuck over there. I could see deer coming through the woods. There's doe smoke going through and stuff. So went over, climbed up in that tree. And that's when I had that 140 and that smaller buck chasing that doe around. And if I stayed in that tree that I was in, that I knew I was out of the game of, I wouldn't even know they were there. Hmm. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, you got got good if you're good. Yeah. You know what the deer are doing in that area, you know. Feel like it's not right. Sometimes you got to make a move and, and get on them. Yeah. And damn, sometimes you'll do that and it will screw you over. But then <laughs> that's the name of the game, though, you know? Oh, yeah. You win some, you lose some. But, you know, that's, you know, as long as you're always freaking learning and you're always, you know what I mean? That's if you go in and you hammer it the best you can at all times, no matter what, at the end of the season, whether you win or you lose, like, you learn a shit ton and you're, you're more equipped for next year, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say we always say if you didn't learn nothing, you know you you missed a whole you missed a whole boat. Yeah. So with us being Midwestern guys and you being an East Coast guy, when when is your rut out there? Um, I start seeing stuff like the second week of October, or no no no, second to last week of October when that when Mike Tyson would usually hit that land. Mm-hmm. That's when we're starting to see like. You know, some pre-rut, you know, amping up a little bit, like the, you know, the ebb and low, where you, one day it's kind of, you know, they're pushing those around, they're trying to figure it out, and then the next day they're all out in the field together eating, you know. But then as soon as Halloween hit, that's when I could tell, like, there's pretty big difference in what's going on. Like, you know, definitely you could tell the rut's heating up. But usually when I see... The biggest, when it comes into the biggest part of the rut, right before the lockdown, it's like the 13th of November. About like us. So right on. Right around yeah. the same area. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that, yeah. that, that's just pretty cool to, you know, match up what we got going on here all the way, you know. Yeah. 14, 15 hour drive away. You guys are getting the same yeah. thing. We know how far that is because we... We're we're on the fence for the bear hunt, man. We want to come, but we yeah. don't know about this year. But next year, maybe. Dude, twenty twenty. Oh, you yeah. gotta put my name. You pencil me in twenty twenty. Yeah, pencil you me in twenty twenty. More than welcome, whenever, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, we'll have a good good time. We we just had an unexpected uh, opportunity for a really good hog hunt, so we might have to burn a couple of vacation days to get down there and get that done. That yeah. w- that we would take to come out there and bear hunt because we're really we're like, all right, is, is down to velvet, velvet whitetail, 
somewhere, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Kentucky, or is going to be a bear hunt. So we're trying to figure out, all right, we're doing whitetail or we're doing bear hunt. Yeah. And then we, <laughs> then we got this hog hunt. Just we, throw it in our laps. We were like we were like 75% bear hunt. We're like, all right, we're, we're going to go out there. We're going to do a bear hunt. And then we got this hog yeah. hunt thrown in our lap. And we're like, oh, man. If that comes to fruition, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to hit that up yeah. and then do. I mean, twenty twenty. Basically, yeah. what it boils down to is we have no vacation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need more vacation, yeah. bro. <laughs> so. We need a lot you, of vacation. Like, you know, I got straight some. I got straight killers through my bloodline. If y'all want to hunt hogs, alligators, you all want to come up here and hunt bears and deer out in the mountains with me, or we can go to my dad's house in Maryland hunt Maryland and big whitetails on the eastern shore and then go hit the sick of deer like the miniature elk on the eastern shore. I got all that shit covered. Nice, yeah. man. <laughs> Bro, what you got you on know? gators? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, like, you know, we'll try to figure out something. We'll get them, we'll get bears first and then maybe the next year we'll go down and we'll bow hunt some gators. I yes. guess. I got a bunch of family in South Carolina and stuff and, you know, we go down there and that's what we do. That's, all my family down there in South Carolina, Georgia, and everything, they go out there with the damn knives and the dogs and chase the hogs down with that and then get them with the, stick them with the knives. I'm out on that, but <laughs> I watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, a guy that, that shotgun hunts where I used to hunt, um, he actually did that. I don't know. I think he did it in Georgia. Um, he mm-hmm. went down and got caught up with a couple guys. And he, he had some dogs and straddled him up and then he come up with a knife and and stuck the pig a couple times and they got it on youtube and it was it was pretty wild to watch man yeah it's crazy it's pretty wild I'll, that's why i just got done eating some wild hog just i had some for dinner i had some ribs for them nice man. Yeah. well we yeah, appreciate we love it where are you guys going down there um south west alabama north or no, 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 no. <laughs> Southeast Alabama, n- northwest Florida. Yeah, somewhere in that there line. Go. Yeah. So we're there pretty go. stoked it's about like, that. Things are like, yeah, there's no whole, you know, you can get them wherever. You shoot them at night, infrared, ironing feeders, they get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can hit them at King T if you want to. They don't care. They're like, get them done. <laughs> That's what we've been told. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just want a euro. Yeah, I just want a euro skull from Ingrams <laughs> in here in the studio. So, there you go. Big old tusk on it. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. What do you think about Mister Freeze? Everything he put that in there, and uh, you know, has he even told you anything about messing with that yet? For Ingram. Yeah. Yeah, I'm get the mount's going to be about four foot by two and a half. <laughs> so. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. So it it will come out. It's pretty epic. Uh, Ingram's the man for the job, man, because he's got a pretty big task. Homie's mount's badass, dude. You need to do something like that because you'd be packing them out miles like that. Right. Homie's yeah. got, homie made a pack mount mount from Ingram. We'll be releasing those whenever he gets them done. What do you say, Marchish, April? Yeah, well, uh, March, first weekend of March is the show. So. Yeah, so we'll have them by then. So, yeah. yeah, we'll be releasing them about first weekend of March and everybody will be able to see them. Um, I might have a super secret mount for Mr. Freeze mm. coming out too. I so, like that one. Yeah, so that one's going to be pretty sick. So we're excited uh, about that. But I, a pig skull or a bear, if you do a bear, like you got to get no. a rug, right? Yeah. You got to get a rug yeah. and a skull. He, yeah. He's done a bunch of bear skulls, and those are sick. I'm shouldering a pig, by yeah. the way. You're shouldering a I'm pig? Sh- I'm probably doing both. I'm going to shoot two. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot about seven. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna shoot at least two. How so. many arrows do I got? That's like the question I need to ask. <laughs> so. After the if you get a pig and you get his mouth like somewhat open and get a beer bottle like opener in the very roof of his mouth, and you just walk <laughs> over and pop your beer there or something like that. I'd be pretty solid, <laughs> right? Yeah, that'd be epic. <laughs> mm. That's a lot better That's than just cool. like. Uh, I mean, you got a uh, you got a new. Like a new new age pack, right? Yeah, yeah. I got a new age pack. Um, I, I'll uh, I'm gonna send it to you. You're in the group, man. I'm gonna send it to you right here after we hang up. All right. I'll you got you got Snapchat, you. don't you? That's cool. I got him. 
You yeah. you need to add him to the group, man. You want to add him yeah. to the group? Yeah. Right. We'll add you to the Whitetail Legacy snap. It's a secret. Saying, he's he's the out there by bro. himself. Yeah, that's a top secret group, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> You're by yourself out there on the East Coast. Yeah. We got the North <laughs> and the South battle going on right now. We got, we could, we're got calling it Civil War right now. <laughs> uh, damn it. You could be the middle with a middle ground guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm this old man out in the woods, you know. I, I pop shots at bear, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you'll fit in perfect, man. Yeah. All right, brother, man. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, we knew this was going to be a lot of fun from when the start, so uh, we can't thank you enough. And uh, you got anything else you want to you want to tell them before you get off? Hey, I want I want you oh. to I want you to cover your uh, Facebook page. Oh, my Facebook. Yeah. Uh, the Shenandoah Bow Hunter. Yep. Um, I got that going, and man, it's just going to be everything. I'm just going to everything I go through, whether it be you know here wrapping up deer season, going into duck and goose, going into turkey. Then I'll be headed up to Maryland back home. I'm going to be shooting stingrays with the bow, and wrapping it on up and doing the whole scouting. I'm just going to do the whole nine yards with that. Yeah, make sure and follow that page, man. If you want to see some off-the-wall tactics, just different stuff that a lot of people ain't doing, that's the page to follow. Yeah. And it, I can tell you're you're ate up with it, man. You're working hard, and then you're like, oh, man, I got time to get out there. <laughs> I'm going to go hike four miles in the woods, and I got to drag this big deer out. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about it tonight, man. When I, was, like, when I was getting up in there, I'm like, dude, I've been working ridiculous hours. I've been working like 16-hour days for freaking three weeks now seven days a week i'm like dude i am so beaten like my body's beat up and wore out i'm like man if i gotta drag a deer out here i might just like stay the night and <laughs> get halfway down and stay the night and get them out in the morning <laughs> Dang, <laughs> that's, that's crazy crazy <laughs> you know it is what it is man but damn i really appreciate y'all you know wanting to talk to me and you know the friendship that you know we've gotten you know, this far, and it's shit. It's only gonna get better, man. Anytime oh, yeah. y'all want, anytime y'all want to bullshit again, you know, I'm always here, and I got plenty we can talk about. <laughs> oh yeah, right for on, sure, man. we know that. <laughs> yeah, we can go, we can go on and make a damn eight part freaking podcast. <laughs> you know, we cover everything. <laughs> All right, guys, I enjoyed. I enjoyed Mark coming on. I uh, hope you guys did too. We're we're coming down here on the days. Um, actually, when, when we release this, the season might be over for us. Uh, if you're down south, we hope you guys are still getting out there, trying to get it done, and uh, making some memories, leaving a legacy, and Whitetail Legacy is out.